Sometimes, I like looking back on the time when I was a kid in school. I was so, so excelling back then. I was so good, especially in making great troubles to my teachers. I remember one day I was so naughty that I had no choice but formatting the ent entire school server just before I had to take a test on it. But I want to talk today about education and about changing the educational mindset of our children. We all know our educational system as an informational-based system, as we try to squeeze as much information as possible into our children's brain. Having educators, so as politicians, always arguing about which information is important less and which information is important even less than that. And it constantly making me wonder, are we in the right direction? Are any of you, the people here sitting in the crowd, feel comfortable about their schooling experience? I came here to suggest today that it is much more important to invest in developing children curiosity to engineering and to equip them with the engineering set of skills to satisfy that curiosity rather than just let them see tired, frustrated in the class, waiting for the lesson to get end, and forget the entire information that they learn by the time they are leaving their school gate. But in order to do this, I would like to go back in time, 10 years ago, to the time when I first discovered myself, what do people really mean when they say that children have an extraordinary capacity? You probably heard this sentence before. It was when a six-year-old girl approached to me and explained about what a centrifugal force is. Centrifugal force is one of the forces in classical mechanics. And she was so excited to be able to explain about such a high-level phenomena. And while she explaining, I find myself thinking, is there anything that a six-year-old child can understand about physics that I cannot understand even during my 20s? Immediately in that moment, I realized that something wasn't that optimized in my schooling experience. And that this is actually the reason why a person like me, who always hated school and swore many times never to be an educator, ended up doing just that, being an educator and also establishing a company that operates in 40 countries with a, with a clear mission of showing children the beauty side of our engineering world. Because you see, nowadays, prospects for the future are changing. And it's clear to all that opportunities for the younger generation, for our children, are changing as well. Just look on how many new professions were introduced to our world only in the past 20 years. Marketing communication managers, nanotechnologists, Uber drivers, application developers, and so on and so forth. So what it basically means is that the things that our children must do today in our present in order to secure their prosperity in the future are changing as well, together with our world. And by the way, it's not only changing now, it's already changed from the last time that we've been all students in school. But unfortunately, education hasn't changed that much. However, in the back of my mind, I also remember the Industrial Revolution consequences of many whom their profession just vanished from the labor market. Similarly now, today, with entering what I call the engineering era, the effect will be much stronger, as there will be fewer and fewer tasks and services that a robot or a simple robot will not be able to perform better than us, human beings. Robots are going to make everything more accurate, they want to going to work faster, they're cheaper, they can work for many hours, for many shifts, they never get tired, and they never complain. Now, this technological development will cause in the foreseeable future to many professions to disappear again from our world. I'm talking about 20 million taxi drivers who will be replaced by automated transportation services. Drone will be delivering our packages. And even the own and traditional occupations, such as bankers and even insurance agents, are all going to disappear from our world as they're going to be replaced with sophisticated computer softwares. 
And actually, this is the reason why we have to invest today in our educational system to embrace engineering studying. So by the time children will get adult, will grow up, they will know how to operate such robots. They will know how to plan them, how to adjust them, how to ad adjust them according to their needs. And the only way for children, when they're adults, to do this is by developing their engineering orientation. And that's what you try to do here. And in generally, the, the idea of involving children with engineering, to me, it's, it's a mind-blowing. Because on one hand, engineering is being perceived by so many to be such a gray area, an area that belongs only to the geeks. Uh, it's so boring, it's so, uh, it's so scary. But I suggest to the contrary. If you carefully look around you, everything that you touch, hear, smell, see, experience in this modern time today, it's all an outcome of someone's engineering work. I'm talking about the lights here, about the chairs that you all sit on, about this building, and even about this crazy little uh, big screen that spins as I talk. It's all being based on someone engineering great work. And, well, I found that the best way to encourage children to study more about engineering is to do it in a fun way, in a way that they love and feel comfortable with. So I have here with me what I call my personal engineering lab. And I call it this way because it contains almost the entire multidisciplinary world of engineering with these toys. For example, I have here a building block. This is an ordinary building block. It's a plastic injected building block. But after it was injected, it was chrome coated. And now actually, what this brick can do, it can conduct electricity. So if I put it right here, I get an electrical circuit. You see? And I have here a battery box. I'm going to press on. Now it's working. And I'm going to pick one of the electrical components I have here with me. This is a LED brick or a light brick. I'm going to place it right here and close the circuit. Look how easy it is. And I can open the circuit and close it and open and close it until I get tired. <laughs> and I can even include more sophisticated switches, such as uh, this is a sound switch. And I'm going to place it right here. And whenever there is a sound, the light will be turned on. So you see, when you use these kinds of building blocks, even abstract elements in electrical engineering suddenly become tangible, like current, like voltage. It's all tangible and fun to explore. And once children understand that, they can even understand further sophisticated elements, such as um, serious circuits compared to parallel circuits. You got the idea already. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. That was the building blocks of electrical engineering, and it's so simple. Here I have with me the building blocks of mechanical engineering. And in this demonstration, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift a 10 kilogram weight. It looks small, but it is heavy, believe me. I'm going to gently plug it in and put it down gently. OK, and then turn it on. And basically, what you see is this model lifting very slowly 
a 10 kilograms weight. But what is so interesting about this model is that the motor that I'm using there is this motor. This is an 18.2 grams motor. And it's equivalent to me carrying on my back 44,000 kilograms, or equivalent to 44 small family cars. Now, please, do not recalculate my, uh, <laughs> my weight. <laughs> OK, so that was the building blocks of mechanical engineering. But what is so interesting is that if we combine them together, the building blocks of electrical engineering and of mechanical engineering, and by adding a computing unit to it, we basically get a robot. And this robot is not only cute, but <laughs> it's also can be programmed in a very unique way. I have here with me the building blocks of code. For example, this brick constructed out of two elements, a function block and a parameter block. By the way, it's just like in the real world of programming by using functions and parameters. So basically, what I can do with both of them together, I can tell to the robot, I can command it to make a sound of a bell, because I have here a picture of a bell. So here I have here with me a sequence for the code to, for the robot to operate. This is actually a program. It's, it's, it's totally identical to how you write a program for an ordinary robot. You have here wait for a signal event from, my, from one of the sensors that's sitting on that robot, then move forward for two seconds, and then wait for two seconds, and then spin for a duration of five seconds. So I'm going to press play, and it's waiting for my signal, and it's driving for two seconds, stop for two seconds, and you're going to see the light here shining for five additional seconds. So I think you already understand the concept. When you combine this building block with engineering and children and education, their curiosity about engineering is increasing dramatically. And many among our children today might become the next Newton of tomorrow. And yes, I really believe that every child can be an engineer, or at least an innovator. If we show them the way to do this, instead of showing them the way to get away of it. Many people assume that hard studying is the key to our success. However, an overemphasis on memorizing things leaves people fearful of challenges, unmotivated to learn, and therefore very vulnerable to failures. We want education to be fun, and we don't want to teach children all about the crazy concept of engineering. But what we do try to get, we try to, to create a positive association with engineering to something positive that happened in the child's life, something that he was excited about, something that involved creation, that involved innovation, that involved with success. Because basically, you cannot fail with playing with these bricks. And this is so important because we all live in a changing world, and we better change with it, or we fall behind other people or other machines that will replace us. In my humble opinion, this is the most crucial educational challenge that our world is facing today, and I believe that it should and can be addressed through the adoption of engineering studying in all of our educational system. That will make a much better future for our children. Thank you very much.